On this week's MetPy Monday, learn how to use geocoding to make plotting cities on maps of things like SBC storm reports much easier. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, I want to talk about making a map of storm reports, which we've done before, but I want to put a specific city on it, the city where I live now, because we've had several storms roll through, including this July 10th series that you see on the report map here, and I want to plot my city's location on this map, but I don't want to go look up the latitude and longitude. I'm going to use something called geocoding, which is the process of taking an address or a city or somewhere that is a text representation of a human name for a place on Earth and turning that into a latitude and longitude. So this would be really great if you are doing something like plotting a lot of cities where you collected damage reports from newspapers or you just wanted to put these cities on there because they're known cities. You didn't want to have to go look up all those lats and lawns. So we're going to, first off, start with a big block of imports. So we're going to import cartapy.feature as C feature. So we'll get our county, or our states, and uh, national outlines, land masses, and so on from that. Our coordinate reference systems from cartapy. Pandas. Geopandas, Matplotlib, and then from metpy.plots, we're going to import US counties. I had a video on that quite a while back, but this is a set of shape files at three different resolutions of all U.S. state county borders. And then use our matplotlib inline magic. Okay, now you might have to do some optional installs. I, for example, geopandas may not be in your environment, or there are some other sub packages that might have to get installed to do some of these things if you don't already have them in your environment. Again, that's just gonna be a conda install. So first off, I'm going to create a variable called mytown, geopandas.tools.geocode. And now I am in Siloam Springs, Arkansas. So if we run that and then look at what's in mytown, this is a set of geometries in geopandas. We have one geometry returned, Siloam Springs, Arkansas, 72761 is zip code, USA, and there's a latitude and a longitude. So that was really easy, and this would be a really short video if that's all we were going to do. Now, by default, the uh, service that GeoPandas is using to look up these geocodes limits you to 250 requests per day. Probably not going to be a problem, but something to be aware of. You can also use the Google Maps API. I believe there's a MapQuest API. Most of these will require you to go and register for an API key. That's probably free. And then you can pass that API key into the call to geocode. But really, I've had great luck with the default service, and I certainly am not going to be looking at more than 250 locations per day. But I could see if you wanted to look up addresses and see if they were in or out of a warning box or something like that. One thing also, notice the number of digits that are returned here. So we've got something like 13 places after the decimal. In that case, that actually works out to something like half of an atom width, uh, so an angstrom or so. And that's a ridiculous precision. That's obviously not Siloam Springs uh, to that precision. So I want to encourage you to think about when you see lats and lawns or when you're writing lats and lawns. So the, the one decimal degree is about 111 kilometers. 
or 69 miles. So in the first decimal place, we kick that decimal over one is 11.1 kilometers. So that's enough to tell large cities apart. Then the second decimal place would be 1.1 kilometers. So that's smaller cities. The third decimal place would then be 110 meters. So that's like for fields or campuses. And you can keep going down. Generally, much past the fourth or fifth decimal place is not relevant. Uh, I mean, the fourth decimal place, you're starting to be able to identify pretty small features on land. Five and six, you can identify individual trees or lay out buildings. And generally, meteorology, we're not dealing with anything that small scale. So probably second decimal place even would be good enough. But just something to think about when you're writing down Latin lawns. So I'm going to go ahead, and since we only have one geometry returned, I'm going to get that geometry. So my town, geometry, remember it's just like accessing a series in a pandas data frame. And I only want the first one. So now if we just do my town, we get a really not very helpful map that just shows a single point. This is GeoPandas representation. If you have polygons or multiple points, it's pretty nice. One point doesn't really give you that interesting of a representation. But now we see the Latin lawn if we just print it. OK, so the next thing we need to do is get the wind reports. So we see all these blue dots. This was a very windy day. So I'm going to right click on the CSV here and say copy link address. Wind reports equal pd.readcsv. And then we just paste that address right in. And that's all we have to do. We don't have to manually go out and make the web request. Pandas is smart enough to know this isn't a local file goes and makes the requests and stores that in our RAM. So if we look at windreports.head to see how the processing did, this looks great. We've got Latin, lawn, state, comments, a speed. It doesn't always parse perfectly, especially if there's a comma in the comments. Generally, they do a pretty good job of getting those things removed, but sometimes it will happen. So something to watch out for. The one thing I do notice is the speed is UNK or unknown in many places. I'm going to actually color the dots on my map by speed. So we need to replace that with some value. In this case, I'm just going to replace it with zero. So all those points will plot as the lower end of whatever color scale we're using. So I'm going to say wind reports, the speed series, dot replace. To replace, what we want to replace is UNK. Value is what we want to replace it with, which is zero. And in place equals true, means modify the data series in place. Now, how do you know what all these are? Again, shift tab and start going through the doc string if you're looking for something you've never used before. Uh, in fact, I just did dot tab and discovered this method saying there must be a way to do this in pandas that doesn't involve me writing a lot of things manually. The other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that these are indeed numeric values, not strings, which is what they are. We parsed a text file. So in this case, I'm going to say wind report speed pd.2 numeric and we want to make wind reports speed numeric and then reassign it so now we finally have our data we have the latitude and longitude of our town so we're ready to make a map we're going to make a projection i'm going to use the lambert conformal projection i'm partial to it for North American maps. Central longitude of minus 95. Central latitude of 35. Line wrap here. And our standard parallels will have one at 35 degrees. 
So there's our projection. Now we can actually make the figure. So fig, this is just regular old matplotlib, plot.figure. I'm gonna make a fig size of 10 by five. And remember that defaults to whatever your units are. So if you haven't changed your matplotlibrc file, that's 10 by five inches. And you say, well, it doesn't appear 10 by five inches on my screen. No, it doesn't. And that's probably actually gonna be the topic of a future video is what fig size DPI and all of this means in matplotlib. So then we're gonna call fig, add subplot. We want one row, one column, first plot. Projection is proj that we defined earlier. We're gonna add a feature. From Cartify features, we're going to use the land features. So that gives us that tan coloring of the land. We'll add another feature. States, and this time I'm gonna specify a scale. Since I'm gonna make this map relatively zoomed in, I'm gonna use one to 50 million. And then we're going to use US counties. So this is coming from MetPy with scale one to five million. And there I'm going to specify a line width of 0 0.25, just so that the county lines are much smaller than the state lines. It gives us a map more like what we're used to looking at. And then I'm gonna set the extent. Remember this is done with a tuple to be minus 100 to minus 93 in longitude and 32 to 38 in latitude. So let's go ahead and run this cell and make sure we get a map that's what we expect. Yeah, so we're looking at where most of those wind reports were, sort of this Arkansas, Oklahoma area, and we have our county outlines smaller than our, our in less bold of a line than our state outlines. And this all looks really pretty good to me. So let's go ahead and start adding our data and our town location. So first let's add the town location just because there are gonna be many more data points and we want to know for sure that this works as we're expecting. So I'm gonna call scatter. And remember my town is a point object. If I call my town.xy, I get a tuple that has the x and y coordinates or the longitude and the latitude. Now we can just put in front of this a star and that's going to unpack that tuple and pass it as arguments to scatter. So X comma Y. So we don't have to do that manually. We don't have to say my town dot X, Y zero comma my town dot X, Y one. Uh, we can just unpack that right in there. It's a handy trick. Then our transform is plat Cree because these are latitude and longitude values. My marker is going to be a star. I'm gonna go ahead and line wrap here. For color, let's make it red from the Tableau color palette. Edge color, let's make that black to help offset that red star. Make it 150 points in size. and Z order equals 10. This is just sort of what order, if you imagine each thing that we're putting on the map as a transparency layer on an overhead projector, if you remember those. This says make it the 10th thing, which is gonna be the top thing here. That's so we don't have other data points plotting over the town location or boundaries plotting over the town location. It's just going to make sure it's the top thing on the map. So now if we run that, wait for our map to re-render it. Now we see a star, red star with an outline on top of everything. And that is exactly what we expected. And that is the correct location for Salem Springs, Arkansas. Now let's put our wind reports on. So we're going to scatter wind reports. 
our longitude, remember the x value, which is longitude. I know we always say lat lon, but when we're plotting, it's lon lat. Wind report lat. Line wrap here, the colors, we want to color it by the wind speed. So wind reports speed. I'm just gonna use the default Virtus color map. I think that'll be fine for this plot. And the transform is CCRS, Plat Curry again. And let's make these 20 points in size. So all of the dark dots are going to be zero wind speed, which is unknown, so the speed wasn't reported. So we don't have any reported speeds really near us. We have one over here. But you can see that, in fact, Silom Springs was right in line with all of these wind reports as this storm came through the eastern Oklahoma, western Arkansas area. I hope that you found this useful and that you'll be able to use geolocation and some of these handy plotting tricks that we've looked at when it, you're making maps of events or any other kind of meteorological data. I'll see you on next week's MapPy Monday.